You've already learned about type 1 errors. In this screencast, I'm going to explain what a type 2 error is. Let's revisit what a type 1 error is. Here we have a null hypothesis and an alternate hypothesis. This is a lower tailed alternate hypothesis. We take our alpha value and put that into the lower tail. Based on the null hypothesis, it would be improbable to get a sample with an average value in the yellow range. That probability can be termed alpha and is represented by this yellow region. Even if the null hypothesis is true and the true mean is mu naught, there is a chance that we would get a sample average in the yellow region. In this case, we would accept the alternate hypothesis and reject the null hypothesis. The probability that this would occur is alpha, and if that happened, it's termed a type 1 error. That is, we conclude that the alternate is true when in fact it is not. A type 1 error will occur if we are below this critical x bar, x bar c. We can determine that by taking z alpha times sigma divided by square root of n and subtracting that from mu naught. This is essentially the lower bound of an upper tailed confidence bound. We can also use the norm.inv function in Excel. In either case, this is how we can calculate the critical sample average that we would have to be below in order for us to accept the alternate hypothesis. We can do the same thing for an upper tailed test. In this case, our critical sample average is going to be mu naught plus z alpha times sigma over square root of n. And we can use the norm.inv function but the probability is 1 minus alpha. So a type 1 error is rejecting the null hypothesis when in fact it is true. In other words, we accept the alternate hypothesis when it is false. We have talked about this example in the previous couple of screencasts. You like to ride bumper cars at Elitch's. You think that the true mean is significantly less than 3 minutes. An example of a type 1 error in this case would be you incorrectly accept the alternate hypothesis when in fact is false. So in other words, you have falsely accused Elitch Gardens of having ride times of less than three minutes, when in reality, the mean time really is three minutes. So that's an example of a type one error. There's another type of error. This is known as a type two error. You fail to reject the null hypothesis when in fact it is false. So it's sort of the reverse of a type one error. You can also think of this as failing to accept the alternate hypothesis when in fact the alternate hypothesis is true. In terms of our example, the mean ride time at Elitch Gardens really is less than three minutes, but you have failed to detect this in your sample. You have failed to reject the null hypothesis when in reality the alternate hypothesis is true. The probability of committing such an error is termed beta. Let's take a look at this graphically. On the right here, this solid line is our assumed distribution. This is our null hypothesis. Sometimes we'll put H naught next to that. The dotted distribution on the left is the true distribution, and we don't know that. So we're just gonna label this the alternate hypothesis. So that's true. We're assuming that that's true, but we don't necessarily know that. We can distribute our alpha into the left of our null hypothesis distribution. Now I've got a couple of questions that are gonna guide us through understanding what a type two error is. If we would have gotten an X bar to the left of X bar C, then we would have accepted the alternate hypothesis and we would have concluded that the mean is less than mu naught. If we would have gotten an X bar to the right of X bar C, then we would have rejected the alternate hypothesis and failed to reject the null hypothesis. If the true distribution is H1, the dotted distribution, we would have still needed to come up with a sample average that's less than X bar C in order for us to accept the alternate hypothesis. If H1 is true and we got an X bar that's to the right of X bar C, that corresponds to this blue region. This is a type two error. The alternate hypothesis is true, but we have failed to accept the alternate. In order for us to accept the alternate hypothesis, we have to be less than X bar C. Anything to the right of X bar C 
underneath the true alternate hypothesis, this is beta. This is the probability of making a type 2 error. By the way, the difference between the null distribution and the assumed alternate distribution is known as a mean shift, or a shift in the mean. In order for us to calculate a numerical value for beta, the type 2 error, that is equal to the probability that our sample average is greater than x bar c, given that the mean really is mu1. We can write something similar for an upper tailed test. We can also standardize. We can take our x bar critical based upon the alternate distribution centered about mu1, and we could convert this into a z value. In the next screencast, I'm going to go through an example of how we can calculate numerical values for beta.